my audio. There you go. Can you hear me? Cool. I got you now. Thank you so much for your time. For sure, man. For sure. Happy to help. How are you doing? I'm doing good. What about you? Doing good, man. Doing good. Um, yeah, so tell me a little bit about yourself and uh, what, you, what you got going on, and then we'll, uh, we'll dive right in. Uh, so I'm Krishvi. Uh, I'm from India. Uh, I'm from Madhya Pradesh in India, and I'm actually just 15 years old. I'm going to be 15 in November. Dope. So, I, yeah. So I've started um, filmmaking and video creation about one or two years back, and uh, in like people say that in lockdown something bad has happened to them, but actually in lockdown I. Uh, got the most benefit because uh, I started uh, doing COVID-19 videos with uh, one of my, I can say, mentors. Uh, he helped me uh, in, uh, I assisted him in some shoots of his. So uh, that way I started doing it more seriously and I got my own fans for doing that. Nice. So that's how I uh, basically got started. And I, I started doing some, um, some small shoots here and there, uh, one year uh, before one year. So recently I've uh, gone uh, pretty serious uh, regarding this. So uh, like, so, uh, Mainly the issue that I get uh, when I'm approaching clients or talk, I talk to clients like they somehow they hesitate to work with me because of my age. So do you have any advice for me that I could implement? Well, it's, this is actually the first time I've actually got this question. Um, so do you have a portfolio? Uh, I don't have a website. Actually, I just put my work on Instagram. Okay. So, so you, but in the sense, without having a website, you do have a portfolio of work that you could show a business owner. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, so I think the best place for the first place I'll start if I was in your situation would be I'll set up of like a Facebook business page. And put all yeah. your videos on there. If you don't have a website, you gotta have a place where you can send your clients to, and they can look at all your videos. Right on Instagram, it's kind of hard because you have to scroll through stuff. It's not as easy, and usually for dealing with like older people, it's just one of the platforms that's yeah. not you know the most user friendly for them. So to yeah. start with that, um, what kind of clients are you trying to approach? Uh, actually I've been working with restaurants and small businesses, uh, like car dealerships and, uh, those types of businesses. Uh, I've been working with them, uh, for pretty low right now. Uh, like I know that you charge a lot, like thousand, uh, bucks for a video around thousand to two thousand bucks, but like actually. The problem here is in India, it's um, the budget of people is not that high. Yeah. So I just charge around 100, maximum 200 for one shoot. So okay. like that's where I'm starting from. Gotcha. Um, I mean, you know, I'm a big fan of Chris Doe in the future. I think in your situation, um, you know, I haven't gotten to see a lot of your video work, but you know, I think where you can make a lot of money is working as an editor for people outside of India. Um, because I also don't know how much money that you're trying to make, right? Because I think that's something that's very relevant to a lot of different people. Like when I first started out, I was charging $25 an hour to shoot, $25 an hour to edit. My flat rate was $25 an hour because I did the math and I was like, okay, I need to make, you know, 500 bucks a week. It was like my goal, right? 
So like yeah. I did the math found out okay, how many hours you need to work and this and that. And then eventually, you know, the price got higher and higher. But I think when you are starting out, yeah. um, I think what you need to, if you're like still struggling to get clients in that sense, you need to come up with, you got to do the math of understanding, okay, what is the least amount of money do I need to make this first year to get experience working with clients, to get experience building my portfolio? And then the next year like that, you start raising the price little by little. Like, yeah, I charge, you know, two to five thousand dollars for a video, but like I started shooting video almost five years ago, right? Yeah. And like yeah. you know, and some of the, I don't know if I have it here, but like I actually found some of my first checks that I got for working for a company that it was like it was like two hundred dollars check. And it was like I worked like forty hours on a project. So it's like yeah. there's a progression that goes with that but for me it was starting out like what is the least amount of money that i need to make what's the least amount of money that i know i can offer my service for to a business owner that i'm not going to get so much pushback you're already dealing with the fact that you're new in the business and that you're young so like you know there is a lot of hesitance in that but that's where you're like hey i am young but I can also bring a lot of new, fresh perspective into your videos. So what are the ways, what are the things that you can start, you know, bringing to the table when somebody are asking you about uh, the situations about being young? Um, the Future, you know, they had a whole, like, two series of called The Young Guns. Um, hmm. I'll go and check that out because a lot of their calls, they talked about this kind of stuff. Did you watch that series at all? Yeah, I've watched some of their episodes, Young Guns. Yeah, so you know with Chris, he does a lot of that that kind of talk because you know, yeah. I didn't start doing video till I was twenty seven years old. So I mean that was so I guess more than five years ago, like when I started messing around with it and all of that. But you know, so never had to go what you're going through, but it's all about figuring out what are you gonna like make a list of things that your clients are gonna ask, they're gonna tell you no about. Like, hey, you're too young, you don't have enough experience, go down the list. Mm -hmm. And then make a rebuttal for every single one of those things. So even before they tell you, like, oh, you're too young, just tell them, like, hey, I know I'm really young, but yeah. I'm really fast and I'm, you know, I can bring fresh perspectives into this thing or whatever the situation might be. That's the best way for me to approach it. Um, you know, if I come across anything, I'll, I'll let you know. But I've actually never had anyone ask me this question before. So it's, uh, that's, I think, the best I can come up with right now. Yeah, like according to my age, some client, what some clients do, they try to lower the budget. So like, uh, and the excuse for them is that you are too young, you don't need that much money. Like that's some of the excuses that I've got for lowering the mm -hmm. budget. Yeah, I mean, it's one of those things of like, you know, you're too young, you, you, like they don't know how much money you need. They don't know what you're going through. And I know there's a whole different culture associated with being, you know, in America and in, in India. But yeah. so when you're talking to these clients, are you going face, are you going like to their stores and offering them or are you emailing them? What's the situation? Uh, actually, uh, I, I offered uh, like, recent one of my recent clients at the restaurant uh, i did a shoot for them yesterday so one year back i uh, i offered a free video to them mm -hmm. and then some uh, schedule issues came up and we could not do the video so i had the contact number of the owner like back then i used to dm uh, restaurants and businesses that hey my name is krishveer i make videos and i would like to offer you a free video yeah so yeah. I got, uh, like in my first week, I got two shoots that I did for free and like that, I, uh, showed, uh, other restaurants that I offered free video to. So one of that restaurants, I, uh, messaged them on WhatsApp that, uh, I have this concept for a COVID-19 video in which we'll show the safety measures you are taking in your restaurant and, uh, like that. We, I made the first video for them that was paid and then they reached out to me uh, again for a video and mostly uh, nowadays that I'm doing more shoots and I'm doing shoots with professional 
uh, people uh, who have already got their foot into this uh, business so uh, mostly people nowadays uh, for the past month or two people have approached me sometimes but sometimes i need to uh, dm them and most of the time i get rejected but still i'm Probably trying to do both things yeah, I mean, as many tells you that you're too young, you don't need enough money. It's one of those things that I'd be like, okay, I understand that you feel that way, but that's still my rate. If you want the video, it's a hundred dollars. I wouldn't like. What I learned from Chris is that you don't want to justify your price. You know what I mean? So be like, be like, yeah. You know what I mean? Okay. Um. Sorry. Um. But don't try to justify your price um, in that situation is be like, like, I am young um, and but my rate is still $100 or my rate is $200. And I think that's where I'll kind of leave it at. Because, um, yeah. you know, if those other people are hiring you, you know, what I mean, they see the value in your work. It's one of those things I just spend a lot of time trying to uh, convince people of like because bro when i first got here i was I, I was offering videos for free to people and people were telling me that they didn't need video and i'm like yeah. what do you mean you don't need video everybody needs video and like i was trying to justify myself but the same amount of energy i was spending trying to justify myself with you know trying to convince somebody i was spending i wasn't spending time talking to someone that actually wanted video and saw the value in it so when you get across people like that, I actually have a video that I'm going to post that um, I was going to charge somebody. I shot it yesterday. A nail salon wanted, uh, they want to do Facebook ads in a video. So I was like, listen, because somebody, somebody referenced her to me. And um, I was like, listen, um, my rate's a little bit way higher yeah. than this, but because my friend told you to call me i'll tell you this i'll shoot you a video and set up a facebook ads campaign for you for 750 dollars. and she's like that's too much money i was like okay well then i guess it's, it's not good like you know for me for you to tell me that 750 is a lot of money for you you're gonna be very hard client for me to work with you know what i mean but i went through the whole call process to kind of show everybody what the conversation was like but versus me trying to convince her that 750 is a lot of money i'm like well i guess it is a lot of money you know, if anything changes, then let me know. Move on to the next one. That's it. So that's like my recommendation for that. That's nice. Uh, one more thing that I came across, the uh, restaurant I, that I was telling I made videos for yeah. uh, recently. Yeah. Uh, last time I charged them uh, less, I think, uh, 2,000 or 3,000 rupees less. Uh -huh. and this time i tried to um increase the price uh by i think two or three thousand uh but although they agreed on the price but it was hard convincing them um to increase the price uh because i i like the client i like who he is i like his restaurant but um the price that i did earlier was too less for the value that I'm giving. So when you charge them more, was he getting the same or are you actually giving him more as well? Or, are you, or were you just trying to get paid what you thought was fair to you? No, uh, I actually, uh, I uh, shoot it with a better camera, A7 III. Uh, I shoot it with that. Uh, and I told him that the video quality is gonna be better. I got more gear, I got some lights. So then finally he got, uh, finally he agreed for the price, but it was pretty hard. Like he was uh, not sure if he wanted to do the video. And that was a problem that I charged really low back then. So when I increase the price, it's like uh, they don't like the new price. They don't like to give more money to me. Yeah. Like they liked the video back then. So why would they pay me more for that? Yeah, so I mean, I'll tell you what, bro. Like when it comes down to quality about things, it's one of those things that clients don't care. For the longest time, like I started my business. Like 
my first my first two years of starting my business, I was shooting with this camera here. It's a D5300. Like, it's yeah. not a crazy camera or anything like that. But yeah. it wasn't until this past year that I actually bought, uh, like, two years ago, I bought an A7 III. But when I started my business, one of the guys that I started shooting with, you know, when we're talking about how much money you're making, like, my second year business when we did like eighty thousand dollars i was still shooting with this the guy that i was coaching he had the a73 he had the canon c200 and he's like how is it that you're making eighty thousand dollars a year shooting with that camera i have all this gear and you know i'm making way less than that and i was like you know at the end of the day the clients don't care about what camera you're using or what the quality exactly. of the video is, they want results. And the thing is when you're, when you're charging a client, what would, what I do in those situations is like, I'm listen, my rate is usually 3000 rupees. Is that what you guys use rupees? Yeah. What's your rupee? Yeah. So like, Hey, my rates normally 3000 rupees. I'm going to do this video for 1500 rupees. And then when I give them a contract, I'll put discount 1500 rupees on there so they know it's like, hey, next time we do a video, it's gonna be three thousand dollars. I just want to let you know right now I want to work with you, and this is my discount array. But moving forward, yeah. that I can't give you that same amount of rate. If you want that rate, I could do that, but the quality of what you're gonna get is less than that. It's one of those things that you gotta have that conversation with them in the beginning. It's when it's really hard for you to go back and always ask the client for more money because it's not gonna work. Um, unless you're like doing dramatic steps of like what you're gonna be delivering for them. But like for me, I don't raise my prices on my existing clients. I raise my price on my new clients because it's one of those things like if you're gonna raise your price on your clients, like you gotta raise your price a lot. Like for you to like for me to go from like like if I had to call my client now that I charge $200 an hour and tell him like, Hey, I'm going to charge you $220 an hour. He's going to be like, why the, like, why are you going to charge me an extra 20 bucks an hour? Like it just doesn't make sense. Right. So I'm like, Hey, listen, I'm bringing on a new person. Uh, we're going to start making our processes a lot faster. Your video deliver, your video delivery is going to be, uh, done faster. It's going to be done in 48 hours versus a week. We're gonna be offering new software for you to be reviewing things. So letting you know, uh, two months from now, your rate is gonna go up to two hundred and fifty dollars an hour. I'm, so just giving yeah. you right now, I'm giving you a time frame to let you know that in two months, if you still wanna work with us, our rate's gonna be two fifty an hour. I just, I love, I love working with you as a client. I don't want you to get this, you know, one day and be like, yo, why are you charging me more money? So I just wanna have a conversation. Being transparent with your clients. I think it's the best way to do it. If you're going to raise the money on them, it has to be a good amount. And here's your other thing is you know, those small clients, like a lot of the clients that I started with, I don't work with anymore. And pretty much what happens, uh, what one of my good friends explained to me is you have three levels of clients. You have your A clients, which are the A clients are going to be the clients that pay you a lot of money. They're very easy to work with, but you have very few of those. Your B clients are going to be the ones that you have, have a good budget. They can be difficult sometimes, but they still have a good amount of work. And then your C clients are going to be the ones that are a pain in the ass to work with. They don't pay you enough money, but there's lots of them. Eventually, these clients, your C clients, start disappearing, and then they start becoming your B clients. And those A clients, start, so, it, so it happens, but you start losing the bad clients eventually as you start moving up, because eventually when you start moving up and you build a portfolio, your work gets better, you start to charge more money, and eventually you start saying no to those C-level clients and start building like the next level of those new clients moving up. So, I mean, I think you have, dude, you're 15, like you're killing it right now. Like the, the ambition that you have to already going out and do this, it's so much more than what a lot of people would do. Um, you know, to sound like Gary V, it's like just a little bit of patience and uh and I think you go you go far. Yeah, thank you so much. For sure, bro. Yeah. And one more thing that I wanted to ask you that 
uh, like recently the shoot that I did yesterday, uh, they didn't have a time fixed for the shoot a day before, and it was um, it was not confirmed. And the uh, before thirty minutes of the final time that we decided before they the whole day did didn't pick up my uh, calls and before Sorry, got 30, here. what happened uh the shoot that i did yesterday for yeah. the restaurant uh they didn't confirm the timings they told that we'll do it on 2 p.m and they didn't pick up the call uh, on the shoot day and at 1 30 p.m they told me that the shoot will be done on 3 p.m so um for that, I for a moment I thought that they uh, cancelled the shoot as I had to rent. Uh, I had rented the camera also. So, like, what do you do in these situations when the uh, client isn't sure of the shoot? Do you have contracts? Yeah, I've sent them uh, a basic contract, but I haven't mentioned um, specific details in that. Yes, I mean, here's the thing. If I have a shoot tomorrow and the client hasn't confirmed the time yet, I will postpone the shoot. Like, here's the thing. It's like any other profession, you know, if I was a doctor and there's, you know, it's like for either way, if I was going to have surgery tomorrow and the doctor wasn't ready or if I wasn't ready as a patient, what's going to happen? You're going to have problems during the surgery, either the doctor's fault or the patient's fault. So, Here's the thing, if they postpone the shoot, you show up late or you have to rush to get things done, the quality of the video is gonna end up being impaired at some point. Either like you're gonna be rushed, you're gonna miss something, or they're, they're, they're not gonna be prepared for the camera. Something throughout the process is gonna go wrong. At the end of the day, it's gonna be your fault as a video editor, it's never gonna be, or the creator, it's never gonna be the client's fault. So in those situations, I really tell the client, like, hey listen, I don't think you guys are ready for a shoot tomorrow. I want to make sure that I do my best for you. I'd love for us to reschedule this. You know what I mean? But then also on my contract, I have rescheduling stuff on there. So if I have to reschedule the shoot, like if I have to reschedule the day of, like, you know, there's a fee involved with that um, in those situations. But those are all the type of conversations and things you have to have on your agreement. But in your situation, if I had a shoot tomorrow at 2 p.m. and the client still hasn't confirmed, I'm canceling this shoot. You know, I'm gonna be like, hey, listen, I haven't heard from you. Yeah. We need at least, you know, a 24, 48 hours is ideal. I try to be good with my clients. Give me 24 hours. If you're easy to work with, I'll make it happen. But if not, I wanna make sure that we're prepared. So I'd love to reschedule this for another day when we're all ready to do this. So, did I answer your question? Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay, cool. Yeah. It's all about having the conversations with them before, you know what I mean? Like having the con, like this is where contracts are huge is because those things are all laid out on there. So when there is questions about things, you're like, hey, you know, it's on the contract. So at least like, you know, I tell them like, make sure to read it. And I make my contracts very simple just because I want to make sure that it's easy for everybody. But it's one of those it's very hard having those conversations. Like for you to show up there and tell the client, like, hey, I gotta charge an extra fee. He's gonna be like, what do you, you didn't tell me that there's an extra fee and there's a problem there. But if they know beforehand, it's one of those other things like, okay, well, you did tell me about it. You know, I'll be good with you and, you know, we'll reschedule or whatever the situation might be. Yeah, that's exactly like, uh, we need to be prepared. Like we need to do some pre-production for the shoot before showing up. Exactly, yeah. pre-production is huge, man. Pre-production is huge. Uh, like uh, right now, I have some limited clients uh, and I'm not sure if they are uh, gonna work with me. Uh, I have like this restaurant, they, I'm not sure if they're gonna work with me in the future. So like, how do right. I approach and yeah? Why do you think they won't work with you in the future again? Uh, I think because of my budget, because of the charge that I'm, um, that I'm quoting them. Mm -hmm. I think they were in a bit of shock this time that I charged more. 
So did you tell them you're going to charge more in the future or did you just charge them more? No, I did not tell them I'm going to charge more because I did, I did not uh, know the, the usual charge that other filmmakers and other videographers are charging. Like uh, if uh, like in India also some uh, videographers who are well established, uh, some whom I know, uh, they charge around 30, 50,000 for one shoot. So when I got to know that, uh, that they are charging so much, I thought that like I'm charging so less, like you can't get a, uh, you can get a better service for a price that will, uh, that is so low. Yeah, but I mean, you can't compare yourself to an established, you know, videographer when you're just yeah. starting out. So, you know, when I was starting out, I was charging $25 an hour. And I heard about people that were like, you know, $1,000 a day. I'm like, do you make $1,000 a day? Like, I'm yeah. trying to do it. But like, what they knew and what they bring to the table is very different. Um, yeah, like, charging your clients more without letting them know. It's like, when I go a client asks me to do extra stuff, or if it's stuff, that this is where contracts come, like, there's a scope. So when you're asking me to do more, when we go past that scope, I'm like, hey, I'm more than happy to do this for you. Letting you know, this is outside of our project scope. The additional charge for this is gonna be an extra $500. Are you okay moving forward with this? 500 yeah. is a lot. Okay, so how much are you thinking? I could do 300. Okay, can we do 350? Like, you know what I mean? But you gotta have the conversation with them of meeting them. Or if they're like, hey, no, we don't wanna do that. Or like, you know, then you make, okay, cool. Well, then I won't do that for you. But you gotta have the conversation beforehand because if you just charge them more to let them know, it's one that's where you talked about, like they're probably not gonna wanna work with you again because of the, the shock. Um, but you gotta have the conversation, communicate with them. You know, if you worked with them in the past, you know, honestly, bro, like at this point you have nothing to lose. I'll just hit him up yeah. and be like, hey, listen, I know that last time when I charged you, it was more than you guys expected. I'm like, no, sorry about that. I like working with you guys as a client. And I wanted to find out, is there a happy medium that we can meet in somewhere between the two of where it works both for me and works for you? I did charge you more because it was, you know, after a first shoot, I realized that, you know, it was more work on my end. Uh, but I think for what I'm offering you and for how much I charge, I think you're getting a great deal. Um, and if you don't think so, then that's cool. But, you know, I like you as a client and I just wanted to have a conversation with you. And, uh, you know, here we have to say, but being open with them, man, I think that's the best thing that you could do. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, like, uh, in, uh, like the videos that I'm shooting right now, um i i don't wish to do the uh, those kind of videos in the long term like um like i just wish to do it um so that i get some of my portfolio filled like uh, usually uh, the videos that i'm doing right now are for social media or for uh, just some uh, for displaying on the television um, in their offices like I'm doing videos like that right now but like what you do TV commercials I want to get into that a little bit so what would be your advice if I wanted to step up uh, the video production that I'm doing shoot a TV commercial that's literally shoot your own TV commercials the best way for you to start um, and here's the thing, it took me a very long time. I never, I never pursued shooting TV commercials. TV commercials kind of came to me because I was working with a client. We did like a profile business video for him. And then he was starting to do advertisement and then he was started working with a TV station. And then he came back to me and he's like, hey, can you make me a 30 second commercial using the footage that you shot? And I was like, yeah, I could do that. So he sent, did the commercial, he sent it to the TV station. A week later, the TV station called me and they're like, hey, we just saw the video you did for so-and-so. Are you taking any more jobs? So I was like, I was like, yeah, I can do more TV commercials. And they're like, cool, well, we have a couple of clients. Like, what's your rate? Blah, 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 blah. 
So I told him, and then that started me doing TV commercials. Um, so that, I mean, it definitely was a, a progress on things. But I tell you, if you're gonna do TV commercials, the most important thing I've learned about TV commercials is lighting. Like, lighting is so important to the quality of the video. Just like, it's probably be the most thing. Like, if you spent the next year learning anything, it would be like lighting, composition, and framing. Those three things there, because like that's what really makes TV commercials like stand out because it just makes the editing and the color correction all that a lot easier. Um, but then you also have to work on creating the stories into 30 seconds. But with the TV commercials too, it comes like there's stages of this where I think like what you're doing now is good because like we're creating social media content and stuff like that. It's, you know, you're creating pieces of content for businesses to kind of promote what they're doing. I think the next level is you like you do the profile business videos, interview style stuff. Yeah. You get the experience of working with the business, finding more about the business owner's problems. And then I think the third level is how I think we like to do it is that when we do a commercial for a client, my commercial or the videos we create for them are based on like, what is your goal as a business owner? Because I want this commercial to, all the commercial is, is a piece of marketing collateral for them, right? So if you're just shooting them a pretty video with no purpose, you're not gonna help them reach their goals, which that means they're probably not gonna do another video for you. But if you make a commercial with this, you no know, one purpose of, you know, sending people to the website or making their phone ring or sending people to their store, creating a 30 second spot for that, they're gonna wanna use you again. But I think it all comes with like baby steps. But if you're just starting, if you want to get moving into that direction, find a business that you like, shoot a free commercial for them. Like, you know, and then I'll start sending that commercial to, you know, TV stations, other agencies that might do stuff. But you got to have that one piece of video, that one content that you can show to other people that you're able to do the things that you, you want to get paid for. No, that's, that's actually, that makes sense like doing free stuff that I want to uh, do in the future and I want to get paid for that. Yeah, that's actually really nice. You gotta get experience, so, you know, cause, and you did that. You said you did one free video and then that turned to two paid projects. Like, you know yeah. what I mean? Like it's literally, it's, it's the recipe right there. If you don't have something to show somebody, create something for free. Cause you gotta have the experience. You gotta learn. And, you know, a lot of people has it, I, man, if I tell you the amount of people that like want to work for, for for me and learn for me and then they want me to pay them and they have no experience doing stuff, I'm like, I'm here teaching you and I'm paying you to teach you what I know. Like, it doesn't make sense for me, right? Um, so I think it comes with, with the trade-off. But if you're bringing something to the table, then like, of course, you've experienced, I'm more than happy to pay you. But if I'm teaching you and I'm paying you, like, you know what I mean? It, does, it doesn't make sense. A lot of people like, to me, get yeah. messed up in that scenario. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, one more question that I had. Uh, how do I approach new clients uh, to for video production? Because as you also might know, it is not a stable thing to get um, videos every month or every week. Like, for me, especially, like you must be getting a lot of work, but for me, it's not um, like I'm not getting new clients. So how do I market myself uh, and approach new clients for work? So I think the first thing you need to do, and uh, I'm guessing Instagram is really big where you are in India. Is Instagram like yeah. do, do businesses like advertise on Instagram there? Yeah, a lot of people advertise on Instagram mainly. Yes, I mean, like, uh, go ahead. Yeah, go on. Uh, yeah, so um, the, the first video that I did for a restaurant, he, he didn't know what Facebook advertising it is. He didn't uh, advertise on Facebook. So like most people like Instagram because it's easy to advertise there. Yeah. So we yeah. can Instagram. 
Yeah. yeah, I mean, Facebook and Instagram advertisements are the same thing, but the way I would find new clients follows you, if you're ever scrolling on Instagram, if you see a business that's running an ad and it's a photo ad, I'll take down their information or like screenshot it, make a list of all those people and start contacting them. Like, hey, I saw you running picture ads on Instagram. Have you ever thought about doing video? So like start making a list of people. The way that I did it when I first got started is I'll search a business like, you know, it's like a search like, you know, restaurants, South Florida, and then I'll go to Google and then anyone that's running ads already on Google ads, I would contact them like, hey, do you want video? I so I noticed that, you know, um, you guys are running, you know, Google ads. Have you ever thought about including video to show people your place? So you want to find people that are actively already marketing, but not utilizing video. Because I think that's the next step for a lot of people too. Um, so that would be the best way. And it's a long process, right? Like my sales cycle, it could be anywhere from like, Either we get these projects that they're like, hey, I need this done in a week or people that contact us. And then it takes like one to three months for them to do business with me. Um, so I think in between yeah. those things, you know, the, the cycle varies, but that's where the clients that you've already been working with, those are the relationships that you want to nature in between and be like, hey, I know I did a video for you. Is there anything else I can help you with? Um, so maybe you do photos for them or, or like, what is it that you could be doing in between those new deals that's going to keep money in your pocket and keep you keep your business afloat? I think that's the most important part. It's like, you know, you have to be a hunter and be a, a farmer. So you want to farmer, farm those relationships that you currently have, even if you're making an extra 50 bucks a week or a month, you know, and while you're farming those, be actively hunting for new clients. You know, if you see a new business that's opening up, reach out to them like hey so you guys are brand new what are you guys doing for advertisement have you thought about video like you have to be very active in that um other things are like you know there's networking events and stuff like that which to me i think that could be a hit or miss i don't know what that looks like in india uh but also like partnering up with other people like i'll find a marketing agency that's fairly new that doesn't offer video that's looking for, you know, uh, young talent that be able to help them do those things. And then also you get to experience of working with another business. Yeah, I'll surely contact some marketing agency. Um, and like, what do you say? Should I cold call business or should I DM on Instagram or Facebook? I think it's both. Uh, the way that I do it, I send them an email. And you can do, I've never done Instagram, a lot of stuff like that. It's just not been, honestly, I don't think I've done enough of it to really give you an opinion on it. Uh, for me, email is the way it usually goes. Like I'll find a company I want to work with. I'll email them and be like, hey, John, love what you're doing with your restaurant. You guys had really awesome reviews, um, especially the stuff that they said about your food and service. Uh, my name is Drigo. I run a video production agency where we help restaurants get new customers by video advertisement. Would love to set up a time to talk to find out if this is something you'd be interested in. We had a really great success working with you know, John and John's restaurant and Macy's Kitchen. Uh, let us set up a time to talk. Something along those lines. And then I'll email them. If I don't hear back from them, I'll call them. They'll be like, hey, do you just want to call? I sent an email last week, uh, find out. And then they're going to tell you, no, I'm not interested. They'll be like, oh, no, I didn't get the email. They're like, oh, great, what's your email? I'll send it to you now. So then I'll send them the email again or send them a new email. Then I'll follow up. You know, then I'll do another email. Like, hey, try calling. Uh, I left you an email. Uh, I just want to know if you're interested in video production or not. Let's set up a time to chat. Hey. And then I'll probably call them again one more time. And usually, and then by that time, if I don't hear from them, I just send an email, be like, hey, listen, try to get a hold of you. I'm guessing you're probably not interested. Um, if you ever change your mind, I'll love to work with you. Here's my contact information. Have a great day. That's kind of the way yeah. I'll approach that. Yeah, I've never, I've never used email, uh, email leads. Uh -huh. So I'll, I'll surely try that. 
Yeah, you got to think about it where, like, but here's the thing too, like, you know, if you're DMing, if you're DMing an account that's active on Instagram, it makes sense. The thing that I get weird about, like the reason I don't do Instagram a lot to DM businesses is just my experience working with business owners. There's always someone that's managing their Instagram accounts for them. If you're a business and you're, you know, at some point successful, there's someone that's managing your Facebook or Instagram account for you. It's not usually the business owner. But if you find a business owner's email and you're emailing them, they're going to see that email because there's less people in between me and yeah. getting to them. So that's where like, I kind of didn't like pursue the Instagram, but you know, sometimes it works out, but just from my experience, the email has always been the best way for me. Yeah. I've, I've always done cold calls or, uh, Instagram DMs. I've never thought of emailing. I'll, I'll find some emails and uh, do that this week. Right. Yeah, because if you cold call without them knowing or hearing about you, it, it's kind of hard, right? Because it's like they never heard of you or you're just calling them. But if you send them an email with like, hey, look what you're doing. Um, no, my name is Rodrigo. I help businesses get videos. I work with this in this business. Here's a simple video I did for them. I love to set up a time to talk with you, see if you're interested. Make it easy for them, right? Like. Show them your show them your work. Yeah. Show them who you work with. Give them a compliment. You know what I mean. Make it really about them in that first email. Like you're getting to know them, and then give them that cold call to be like, "Hey, I uh, send you an email. Did you get a chance to look at it? Oh no, what email are you talking about? Well, what's your email? I'll send it to you now. It's a it's a relationship, right? You got to build it up with them. Yeah, like they should know something about you. Yeah, but you know, but you know something about them as well. Because I get emails all the time, um, you know, from people from India. They'd be like, hey, like, hey, sir or madam. I'm like, you did no research on finding out who I am. Like, I am on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn. You type in Tasca Studios. And if you don't find my name on there, it's because you didn't do the research. You're connecting with people, connecting human levels. So be like, Hey, Mr. Tasco, or Hey, Drigo, I love the content you posted on Instagram. Like, it looks like you love traveling. Hey, I run a, you know, SEO agency uh, out of India, and we helped a lot of people get a lot of success. Uh, here are some of the businesses we work with. I'd love to find out if you can connect so I can talk more how we can help you. I don't, I have never gotten one of those emails from somebody. It's like, Hey, sir, madam, I'm a top agency in India. I do SEO, pay-per-click. Facebook funnels, this funnel, this funnel, da 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 uh, I'll get you in the first page of Google. I'm like, okay, cool. You know what I mean? Like, there's just so much about them, uh, nothing about me. Like, it's there's no connection there. So, yeah, like they, it should be personalized. Like they usually just copy and paste it and send it to 100 people. Exactly, and those get they get deleted. So like that's why I say like find something about the business that you like so if you're going to email them like hey i love how active you guys are on social media you guys are putting out some really great content okay that lets me know that you did a little bit of research about me you know it makes you a little yeah. bit different than everybody else yeah yeah for sure for sure uh but how do you go about finding emails of the owners or the managers of the business um, so you can go to their website, right? And you could like look up their contact information and then there's some like websites. I think one of them is called like hunter.io that you could put in like the business name on there and they'll kind of give you an idea of what the email might be. There's a couple of tools like that, but I think if you like just Google email finder, I think you'd be able to find it. But usually the way that I'll go by it, about it is go to their about page go to their website, look at the about page, see if their name's on there, look for their contact info. From there, go to their Facebook, I'll do the exact same thing, try to look at their history to see what they talk about. And the other great place to find the owner's name normally is go to their reviews. Right, if you go to their reviews, people normally like, if you go to Tasca Studios website or Tasca Studios reviews, 
there's always people like, hey, love working with Rodrigo and his team. I received my name's Rodrigo on like eight of the freaking 40 reviews, then the most likely the business owner name is Rodrigo, right? So like, like hey, Rodrigo, love what you guys are doing with Tasha Studios. But it's just doing the research and putting in the time, you know, find yourself more qualified leads versus trying to contact everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I used to contact like many people before. Like I used to make a script and copy and paste and send it to everyone. But I have stopped doing that because I don't uh, anyone interested in that. Like if I send 100 DMs, only one or two will get back to me. So I get it. The personalized message uh, makes uh, a standout from the others. Yeah, and it, and it takes a little bit more time, but it's at this point, it's like you want quality leads, not quantity, right? So if it takes a little bit longer, the way that I would also do it is, you know, when you are going to do it, make a list of everyone you're going to do it. So don't be like, you look up one person, you write a message, you look up the next person, you write a message, look up everybody, make notes on everybody. And then when you do it, you're just going through your list. But if you're going to stop every time to go look for somebody else, you're wasting too much time because you want to get in the flow of things. Um, the other thing too is with your email, um, you know, before you send out a bunch of emails to people, you want to, what they call like warm up your, your mailbox. So uh, I don't know what your mailbox looks like, but you want to have a little bit of like activity on it. Like you want to send out some emails to maybe like a friend or somebody like that, have them open it, have a reply and then start building up the emails but you don't want to send like 50 or a hundred emails in one hour. Like, cause here's the thing. Think of it like Google. You go from sending two to three emails one day, the next day you send out 200 emails. Yeah. Red flag. What's going to happen. Yeah. You're going to send to spam. Yeah. They're going to, you know, mark you as like, you know, yeah. uh, you know, you're going to get flagged for something. So if you warm up your yeah. mailbox a little bit, it, you're going to get more emails through like I got to start from two emails, then three, then five emails. Like I, uh, I can't send a lot of emails suddenly. Yep. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, I think that's all the questions that I ha had for you. So man. Thank yeah. Sure. Thank you uh, so much. For my pleasure. Yo, like, uh, hit me up in a month. Uh, I'll let's follow up. Uh, you know, write down all this stuff. Okay. So, like, what I what I'd like you to do is, so like, every time you email ten people, try try a new subject line. So, email ten people, try a new subject line. Email ten more people, try a different subject line. Email another, try the subject lines. Yeah. And write down the ones that worked for you. You want to start keeping track of this to find out what's working for you. Because if you send out, you know, a hundred emails using the same line, it, it won't help you out. But if you could, you know, start looking at what worked for you, then you can start replicating that and making that system faster and faster. And then, um, you know, and if you write a message a little bit different, look at the things like, oh, what did you compliment them on? What did someone say yes to or somebody said no to? All that data really helps you later on just start making this process a lot easier and better for yourself. Yeah, I, I have to test different things to pick out which one works the best. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I've, I've, I've never tried testing different things in, even in DMs. Yeah. So I'll surely do that. Yeah, man. Give it a try. Yeah. I'll surely hit you up after one month and do everything you've told me to do. Yep. And uh, I, I, I am just renting out cameras for uh, shoots because my camera has uh, been broken and is not working no more. So that's what i do right now i'll try to save up some money to get a camera so that i can i do not have to rent uh, every time yeah yeah so, so right now what's your so like right now with 
let's, if you want to get honest about it, if not, it's totally cool. Like, how much are you making now a month from video? Um, right now, for the past three to four uh, months, I have been making um, around 10,000 10, per month for video. It can vary a little bit. It, it's like 10,000 rupees is like 100, 200 dollars. Like that's just from uh, one. I, I don't get many shoots. I do not get many shoots a month. I just get one or two, uh, maybe three shoots, some photo shoots, maybe. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what I do. So, so in a month, you're doing like what, two to three thousand rupees a month? Uh, like, no, I around 10,000 rupees. 10,000 rupees per month. Okay. So I think let's set, uh, let's try to get you for the next month to get to like 1500 rupees and try to do the double of what you're doing now with contacting and reaching people. But something else I want you to do is, you know how you said you looked up to those people and you found out how much more money they're making? go volunteer to go work for them for free. Yeah. Like go learn from like, if you're busy, yeah. if you're only shooting two or three shoots a, a month, you have a lot of downtime that you could be learning from somebody else that's doing more than you. I'd spend that time. You're gonna, you know, you are working for- Yeah, that's what I like. Uh-huh. Yeah, uh, so like, um, what happened is I play basketball, so I, Met a film. I met a fashion photographer uh, while playing basketball. Okay. Uh, so I reached out to him that night. That uh, he told me about himself, and I told I would like to assist you. So I DM'd him that hey, this is Krishveer. I uh, we met uh, while playing basketball. I would love to assist you for free. And after I think six months, he reached out to me. Hi, Krishveer. Uh, we are doing a shoot for uh, Mercedes Benz. Um, so, would you like to assist? So, uh, so from then I started uh, to work with him. And uh, the first video that I worked uh, with him for, he made me. I I uh, told that I would like to edit it, and he made me edit it and from the next shoots he started paying me for editing the videos so uh, that's something else uh, that i get paid for uh, that's like he gets a lot of shoots he he's actually a really nice person uh, he gets a lot of shoots mainly fashion photography mm -hmm. shoots so uh, i work with him and that's also part of my income right now um, I, I edit for really cheap, but I get to learn a lot from him. Dude, find more people like him. Like if I, if I was in your center, like when I go to LA, I still hit up bigger yeah. production companies and volunteer like, yo, I want to work free for free. I want to learn. So the more people that you can get like that, dude, you're gonna like, you're 15, you have so much potential to grow, work for as many free people as you know, and start getting more gigs like that because it's it's so much better when they're giving you those gigs and you're building a relationship with these people um you know in your scenario yeah. or they're finding more people like that to work from or with yeah. than to work with business owners right now if i was you i would literally i would actually probably change my tra trajectory to look for people that are doing better than me and start working for them versus working for business owners yeah. Because if you're already dealing with the fact yeah, that you're yeah. young, um, you know, and you're gonna have those issues with business owners, but if you like, if you're here in South Florida and you're ambitious as I know now, I would hire you to work for me. Because I'd rather have you working for me than working for a, a business owner. And I just think you're gonna have a better experience and the pro your because your learning curve is gonna go be so much better now because you're gonna be learning from these people that are already doing a lot of the things that you wanna be doing versus having to learn it by yourself, dealing with shitty clients. Because you're gonna be able to build your portfolio yeah. along with that, you know what I mean? Yeah.
like uh, working with him i got to uh, he allowed me to post the videos on my instagram and a lot of people saw that and reached out to me like uh, that's why i'm saying like um, from the lockdown it has been a lot better for me uh, in this video production thing and like you were saying that um, uh, i should work with people like you and all and so i would like to work uh, i would like to edit your videos your youtube videos or any help you uh, require i would edit them for free if you'd like that dude i'd be honored if you did that for me yeah like anything you require like it it's like a thank you from me for uh, getting on this call Dude, I really appreciate that. I'll definitely hit you up for that. Yeah, sure. Anything you um, would like to have some help with? Oh, you can... done. Cool. Awesome, man. I really appreciate that. Yeah. I would love to do that. Awesome. All right, man. Well, uh, I got to run. Uh, thank you. Let's touch base in like a month. Let me know how everything is going, all right? Sure, sure, sure. Our brother, you you, uh, I brother Uh I can I take a picture for my Instagram. Do it. Yeah. Thanks so much, man. Our brother, take care. Appreciate it.